Hello, good morning and welcome. This is Worldwide Exchange. I'm Wilfred Frost and here are your headlines. Hello, good morning and welcome. This is Worldwide Exchange. I'm Wilfred Frost. And I'm Seema Modi. Thank Greece, it's Friday. <laughs> this is Worldwide Exchange. I'm Wilfred Frost. I'm Carolyn Roth. These are your headlines from around the world. Chinese bears roar to the fore. Stocks plummet, shedding over 8% in the session in one of the worst performances for the Shanghai Composite this year. Did you at that point expect it to drag on and escalate in the way that it has? Well, yeah, we, we thought it might well do so. We were, we were hoping uh, through the imposition of sanctions on Russia to deter that. Now, those sanctions are having quite a big effect on Russia, I think. David Cameron, uh, the poll suggests, just about won it last night. Uh, he did see prime ministerial. It was probably his best live television performance of the whole election campaign. Probably too little too late in order to get an overall majority. But nonetheless, he will be pleased with his performance. The Tories off the back of that are saying that, quote, debt would be about £90 billion more under Labour plans. What do you say to that? Michael, let's get some uh, specific trades. Talk about the equity market. If you were to be playing UK PLC, how would you do it? And which sectors uh, are you overweight? at the moment? Well, the sectors that, are, that, if you like, are most at risk at the present moment in time is clearly the banking industry, because whatever the result, they are going to be slightly positive or very negative. Simon, thank you very much. Yes, indeed, a resounding victory for Prime Minister David Cameron, securing an overall majority in Parliament, doing far better than people expected. That has allowed markets to rally today, the FTSE up over 2%. The reason, really, just because we have had a clear result at all. There was a lot of uncertainty running up to this vote, and of course markets don't like uncertainty. Uh, and interestingly enough, Wilfred, I'm not making this up, his name is Wilfie. So uh, interesting, <laughs> making new friends here. Back over to you. Well, thank you very much for that, Seema. He's uh, a very good-looking chap as well. He looks a little bit like you. He does you know. a little bit, incredibly yeah, pale. Yeah. And he's, he's quite tall, too. <laughs> it might be. I think we should take one now, Julia. Let's take no, one now. I think we should, yeah. uh, I think we should swiftly move on. We're just going to do get in touch throughout the show at, at CNBC Works. Come on, I'm going to get, oh, get wow. you on very We're quickly. Doing, there okay, we go. Good. There we go. We've got one in. There you go. Right. Done. Now I'm going to move on. on. I've been told. Uh, <laughs> Japan also in focus. A 7% return doesn't tell the full story. It's been volatile. It was negative for most of the year and has only started really to perform as Abe turned on the easing taps again, weakening the yen. And that extraordinary negative correlation between the yen and the Nikkei has pushed the Nikkei up by 7%. Now, President Putin has thrown his uh, hat in the ring recently as well and supported Mr. Blatter. He has said uh, this U.S. indictment is a clear attempt for the U.S. to spread its jurisdiction to other areas and indeed an obvious attempt to prevent Blatter's re-election. Well, whatever the motivations, whatever the actions of the last 48 hours, the Congress is kicking off behind me and the presidential vote will go ahead tomorrow. That is all we've got time for today on Worldwide Exchange. Uh, I'm Wilfred Frost. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back same time tomorrow.